Okay, so I want to talk through a few options for wall panelling for a feature wall because it can really take your reno up, up a notch. If you followed the little project I did in our spare room, just adding that V-board panelling made such a massive difference. What I want to do is go through a few different options and also share some cheats with you. I absolutely love this um, look. It's uh, called board and batten and I just think it really um, works really well with Hampton's looks. Um, one of our Wonder Women was doing her doing up one of her Airbnbs while Airbnb's quiet and she was going to put this in a room. She's got a very gorgeous and quite ornate beaded chandelier and decided against it because they're conflicting styles. What she decided was the style that, uh, of light fitting that needs to go with this is quite simple. And like you can see, the furniture in this room is quite simple and it works really well. But hold that thought because I'm going to show you the product that you can get to do this. Um, in a panel, but there's a subtle difference that I want to show you. Um, personally, I think if you're going to do it, like if you're going to do it in a reno to sell, just go with the panel because it's super easy. Um, but if you're going to do it in your own home, I'd actually think about doing it with battens rather than go the paneling. This is the site where you can get the, the panels, but I'm just going to show you a little distinction that you need to be aware of. The style is Vogue. Ascot is more of a relief style, which I don't think is so good. So the panels actually have, like they double up when they meet. So the, the battens double up. And I just think that that doesn't look quite as good as the, the when it's done traditionally just with battens. So I guess it's a labour cost. Um, we did this in our Rennie Street project, but I actually had the um, cabinet maker do it. He did it out of MDF. And like we did a massive wall, like it was eight or nine metres, and it cost us $400. Like I had to be painted. So, you know, MDF takes quite a bit of painting. But, um, yeah, there's more than one way to get the result that you want. So that is the batten and board panelling. So can you see there how all the um, the battens are the same thickness, whereas on the panel style where the boards meet, they're not quite double, but you can see that it's wider. I, I just don't really understand why they didn't work that out a bit better. But anyhow, uh, so this is another look that I really love. So the timber battens on end, quite expensive to do because there's a lot of material in that. But a really, for a more contemporary home, it's a really, really nice architectural finish. And those of you who would have seen Kathleen Friedrich's last renovation, she actually did a whole hallway in this and she concealed, well, very similar, and she concealed the doors along that hallway so you couldn't actually see that there were doors there. So once again, a really, really nice look, but also quite expensive to do. So if you're going for battens, then you've got a whole lot of opportunity to sort of let your imagination run wild. And I think this is an absolutely awesome design. So talk about impact on what would otherwise be a fairly plain wall, I think, you know, is, is a really great look. So just to answer your question, Vivian, yes, you absolutely can batten over Jiprock. No problems at all. You just got to think about what's happening at the skirting, okay? So your batten needs to be at least as thick as the skirting or less thick than the skirting. It can't be more so. So this is plywood. Now, this is a like for a more contemporary home. I know that my son, David, would go for this over some of those others that we've shown. Like I love the more classical looks. He's into the contemporary hipster style stuff. But what I want you to notice is I've done an express joint. So an express joint is where there is a gap all the way around and it's the same distance all the way around. So probably what they would have done is painted that wall dark and then done the express joint. You can't really see what colour it is. And... Um, <clears throat> A way that's often done is that um, moulding called P50 that we use to create shadow lines. It just really, it keeps the joint at an even depth or width 
and yeah, quite a nice finish. Now that's a really cost-effective way of doing a feature wall and certainly in some styles, plywood is very desirable. And as you can see, it looks really good with the plant as well. I absolutely love wallpaper. And these days, wallpapers can be removable. Stephen and I, the only time when we teetered on divorce was hanging wallpaper. It certainly was not good for the marriage. So we don't do wallpaper anymore. I absolutely love this one. It's uh, it's called La Palma. It's by Catherine Martin, who you would remember is a, she's Baz Luhrmann's wife. But wallpaper is about $450 a roll, which is, a, you know, a really nice designer one. So if you're going to go for wallpaper, I'd suggest probably do a bit of practicing. Bunnings do have some decent designs and um, don't just rely on what they've got. They do special orders as well. So think about maybe practicing on something um, a little bit more cost effective before you go and start outlaying, you know, $500 a roll because the rolls are 10 meters long, but a, another really great look for a feature wall. Oh, so the other thing on wallpaper is you can actually get paintable textured wallpapers. So, you know, things like the wainscoting with um, the Hamptons look, you can actually get a wallpaper where it looks like it's wainscoting, but it's not. It's textured wallpaper and you just paint it. So that's another option. I'd forgotten to put that in. Now, we all saw Christina Reed's beautiful uh, renovation. And basically, this was her solution to a crummy old red brick wall. And I actually think that look is, is amazing. I've discovered that you can actually um, do this with faux bricks. So you can buy panels of faux brick. It's quite thin. You can, uh, I'll show you the product in a minute. And you can um, basically stick it to the wall, paint it, we all scrumble, do they say scrumble? With paint to get that really nice um, and vintagey sort of finish. And there you go. So you don't really have to have a 80 year old wall to get the look. Okay, so this is another one. This is a product from Northern Rivers. And so basically what they do is recycle old timbers and sleepers, but they have created a DIY product so that you can actually put together, I think I've got the images of it, you can put together a, uh, a rustic wall. Um, this would be awesome for some Airbnbs and anyone can do it. See on the top left, you can see that the, um, so what they've done is they've got timber, like recycled timber and sort of tidied it up. And then they've planted on like a tongue on the back. So you just slot it together. So obviously you have to put some, uh, some studs in to um, fix it to, but um, it's, it's a DIY product prefab, sort of. Um, I think it's about $170 a square metre. So it's not overly cheap, but then again, lots of wallpapers aren't either. That's another great product too, depending on the style of the look you're going for. Okay, so let's go back to this Easy Craft site again. So this is where Bunnings source their um, panelling from. And I want to go back to products. That's what we want. So basically, that's the, the V board. Uh, we didn't use that one, but use, we used something similar. Uh, which one did we use? Was I think it was, yes, it was that one up there. So the one with the bead. And so, yes, yeah, so that's um, quite a nice look. But some of the other products that they have, which I think are really cool, are these chevron designs. So have a look at that. So that's another really great design for, you know, zhushing up a more contemporary property. Now, some of these you have to do through special order. You can't buy them off the shelf, but well worth the wait. Okay. And the other one I wanted to show you is the faux brick wall panels that interlock. And I'll just show you the choice there's lots of choices like you can basically get anything put that on your wall and give it a coat of paint and bob's your uncle okay so let's just go over them again so we've got so this is the northern rivers 
um, recycled timber made into a DIY product. I'm sure you could do this without the DIY product if you had someone that was pretty handy with a screw gun. So this, the faux, the faux brick wall, wallpaper we all love. Well, I certainly love it. So the um, timber plywood, interesting that they've staggered the joints as well. So the batten done in a more creative design. So that could definitely be done straight over um, Jiprock. And of course, the, um, the timber screen, which is probably, it would have been done out of something like Tasmanian hardwood and a really nice finish, but quite expensive to do. I am thankful that I finally got to do this. What I'm going to do is put together a um, little fact sheet. So with the links to those, um, to where you can look at those products. So if you, in case you're thinking about a really beautiful feature wall, um, that will help you to source it. And if you've got a really beautiful feature wall, or you've got an idea, a tip, please share it on the in the group. So um, we build up our repertoire of designs and ideas. I hope you're all doing well. The lockdown is soon going to sort of ease up a little bit for some of us. I see some people have already seen their grandies, which is really great. And yeah, just stay happy and uh, look after yourself. And I'll see you next week. If you've got any suggestions for what we can do in the Facebook Lives, please let me know because I'm really happy to do the work for it. Take care, everyone, and see you soon.